What's up, everybody? I guess I'm just going to be flying solo tonight on this St. Patrick's Day. What? I'm filming right now. I got people yelling at me from the other room. That's always great. Anyway, if you pop in tonight, feel free to hop onto the chat, say hi. Um, I don't really have a plan for tonight, so... Um, we're just gonna paint, we're gonna talk a little bit, we're gonna have a good time. It's gonna be a little bit interesting going solo. I really don't even know what I'm going to paint tonight. So um, if you have an idea, pop in, let me know. Say, hey, Paul, let's uh, let's paint this, let's paint that. I, I'm down with anything. I think I'm gonna do something, um, you know, maybe a seascape or something like that that really kind of channels our typical uh, St. Patrick's Day kind of vibe, lots of green. Um, but really, I just this is more about just hanging out tonight and doing something different. There's no tutorial going on. I'll probably talk about what I'm doing, tell you what my thought process is as I'm developing the painting. I'm gonna take my glasses off. I can see a little better. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, again, happy St. Patrick's Day. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on in the world lately, and I think it's good for us to get together and unwind and just really, um, no, I need my glasses. Well, I'm being a little indecisive. Sorry about that. There we go. Uh, anyway, it's going to be good for us to get together and talk about what's going on or, or maybe ignore what's going on. You, you guys let me know what you want to talk about. Um, anyway, so let's talk a little bit about the painting process. Actually, before we do that, let's talk about the fact that it's St. Patrick's Day and somewhere there's no snakes on an island. And for some reason, here we decide we need to drink a lot. I didn't think to get some Guinness for today or any other Irish beer. So we're going to substitute with Czech Pilsner from Bowie in Astoria. It's what we had in the fridge. It works. It'll wet my whistle. It'll wet my whistle, y'all. And uh, we'll get going painting uh, in a little bit. Is anybody in there? I see there's people looking. Who's watching? Say hi. Say hi. Come on, do it. You can do it. Say hi. If you're if you're, if you're being shy, that's okay too. Um, anyway, so I, I think we're going to go ahead. I've got just a little canvas here. I Again, I don't really have much of an idea of what I want to paint, but that's kind of the fun challenge of painting sometimes is actually figuring out, hey, what are we going to paint? And like I said, I think I'm going to do a landscape format. I like to paint landscapes, period. So I think we'll stick with a landscape today. Um, this is going to be a great way to kind of introduce what we do um, when we're not just teaching people how to paint. So if you're tuning in and you're excited about what you're seeing, you want to learn a little bit about painting, make sure you click subscribe down below and ring the bell so you get notifications when we're doing something new. Um, Let's talk about what we're going to do a little bit. I'm going to switch over to my picture in picture. Whew, whew, there we are. And there. This camera's a little bit dim, but it'll work. Um, so we're just going to start with a nice 11 by 14 canvas. It's just white. It's kind of nice sometimes to do. Actually, I prefer working with larger canvases. They're a little bit easier to work with typically. Um, but. Uh, it, it's great to work on small canvases too. The, the upside to working on a large canvas is you have so much more opportunity for detail um, versus uh, working on a small canvas. Now let's just put it in perspective. Let me grab a couple brushes here. If I'm working on a small canvas, I have to use a little tiny brush like this to do some fine detail work. If I go to a little bit bigger canvas, I can use a brush that's this size to do the same detail work, which means I can do finer detail with this one. And if we move to a huge canvas, which is really a lot of fun, we can use a big brush for doing some small detail work when you step back and look at it from across the room, which means we can do really tiny little stuff with this, a little bit smaller with this, and even bigger yet with this. So. Keep in mind, I think that's one of the things that I see that when people go out to start painting, and, and I know I did it too when I was young, and and uh, they're, they're insecure about painting, so what do they do? They grab a small little canvas and small little brushes, and they're trying to create, say, a tree or 
a mountain. Mountains are a little easier to do on a small campus, but something small that's got some detail, and all of a sudden they realize it's really hard to do a lot of detail with a tiny, 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 you know, double zero or triple zero brush that's like maybe two or three bristles of hair. It's really hard to get that fine detail in. So I encourage you, if you're going to get your own uh, canvases and get your own uh, paints, don't be afraid of starting with a bigger canvas. I, I know um, we teach typically with the 16 by 20s in our studio. Um, and we also, and I know you guys remember Bob Ross, the, the man, the myth, the legend. He, uh, he always painted, for the most part, on um, uh, 18 by 24 inch canvases. So, um, you know, it's good to work in a larger canvas once you get comfortable, but really, you know, 11 by 14 is a good size to start with. It's not too small, it's not too large not too intimidated about trying to fill the canvas. Um, so let's see, what should we paint? Anybody have a suggestion? Um, let's just start, I'm just gonna start kind of with a generic kind of um, sky that I would want to, would normally paint if I were painting a, a painting for the studio or for the go box. And I think what we're gonna go with is kind of a neutral tone. Oh, I want to kind of do some high contrast in this painting. Now keep in mind, I'm not painting this painting for the studio. I'm not painting this painting for the go box. I'm painting this painting for me. I'm painting this for show you what I do, have fun. What's up, Marissa? Good to see you on here. Yes, that's right, we did. Uh, I remember we used to do this fantastic painting with a, it looked like a pub sitting alongside the seashore with a uh, pint and, and a fiddle. And uh, that was uh, always a fun one to do. And Marissa, who used to be one of our employees, now lives in Colorado, and she and her husband, Matt, um, came in and painted that. That was, I'm trying to remember, first or second year? First or second year we were in business? Probably our first year, actually. And uh, it, was a, it was a challenging painting. Sometimes I look back at those paintings and I think, what was I expecting of people? But, I mean, we managed to get it all done, and that was a lot of fun. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Let's start off with a toast. Let's toast to, uh, I've got my, hold on, I'm gonna go back to my main camera here. Hold on. Ah. Flying solo is a little bit interesting. Let's go there. There we go. I uh, didn't have a fancy glass, but I don't know, we got some Omara's Irish cream once that came with this cup. And I thought, well, that's more interesting than nothing. It doesn't even hold 12 ounces. So, but the upside is I do have backups over here. I've got an ice bowl with a couple extra beers just in case we go long. But let's toast to St. Patrick's Day. Let's toast to the world settling down and slowing down a little bit and remembering there's so much more to life than um, a lot of the things we worry about on a daily basis um, right now getting involved with doing something creative is a great way to free your mind, a great way to relax, a great way to check out adding beer to it, or wine. Or if you've had a rough day, something harder. But, you know, be careful. Sometimes it doesn't make us feel better. Sometimes it makes us feel worse. So, you know, know yourself. Know your limits. Know what you're supposed to do. And definitely don't get in a car and drive after you've had a beverage. Um, I'm drinking at home. Jenny's in the other room with the kids and they're watching a movie and I think they made some pie and there goes one of the kids by the door. Anyway, guys, here, let's toast to St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day alone. St. Patrick's Day without going to the Irish bar with no drum corps, no live music. Uh, yeah, here we are. Cheers, y'all. Ah, Czech style Pilsner for St. Patrick's Day. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. All right, I'm going to check my phone and see if somebody's messaging me and saying, hey, turn the mic up. No, it's just a friend. All right, but you say he's just a friend. Yeah, it's just a friend. All right, cool. So I always like to start whenever I'm painting uh, any kind of painting. I'm going to go back to my screen here. There we go. I'm going to turn me off. Well, no, I'll leave me on tonight. Um, I like to start with my biggest paintbrush because um, I like to kind of really kind of sketch things in. And I think maybe what we'll do tonight is I'm going to go ahead and actually do more of a sketch to start with and figure out where we're going. And a lot of times 
when we paint skies and we paint seascapes, we have this tendency with wanting to start with blue, and blue's great, um, but there are other colors that we can use to kind of build up our layers and give the painting more depth. And this is something that you're not gonna see in our studios very often. Um, this is something that is really something I do when I'm doing a commission piece or doing more of a studio quality piece. And it's kind of building up our depth of colors that create our sky and clouds and ocean. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start off with a little bit of raw sienna. And this doesn't make sense, but it'll make sense later. And I'm gonna go ahead and sketch in a quick little horizon line, maybe about a third of the way up. If you guys are type A personalities, oh, let me bump my camera, ooh, hold on. We're live people, these things happen. Oh, I'm bumping everything. I feel like too big, too small a space. Um, but when we get started on here, hey Marissa, is Matt watching too? Come on, you gotta tell me. Tell me if Matt's there too. All right. I'm basically gonna create for myself a little um, kind of washed down, washed out, monochromatic painting. And I'm doing this using raw sienna. Now raw sienna is a color that when we put it on our palette and we start brushing it on our canvas, um, it, it has a tendency of looking uh, yellow, but it, it, it's really kind of just a golden tone of brown. Um, the nice thing about that is it allows us to use it to warm things up without this trick of, or not trick, but without this uh, risk of turning everything too green. And so I really like to use this uh, color to warm up skies. I really don't have even, I'm not looking at an example, I'm just painting, all right? I might have to move my chair a little bit. I'm kind of precarious. We gotta figure out some of these cameras. We're doing pretty good, but like this one that we've got, I don't know. This one that we've got that focuses on the canvas. I'm not sure it's the right thing. So I'm thinking maybe as we start developing this, da -da. I'm thinking maybe what we might do, like I always think of Ireland and I think, uh, and we've done a few paintings of uh, Ireland with cliffs and I always think of cliffs and the ocean and castles and um, that's all great. Um, I like that, but I'm thinking maybe what we might do is kind of some cliffs and an, maybe an island castle. And I kind of want to get some trees in there, which is, is interesting because typically you don't think of trees when it comes to Ireland, but it doesn't have to be Ireland. It just has to be, you know, we're just going for something that's kind of makes us think of it. So maybe it's going to be like a Pacific Coast castle. <laughs> Who knows? Why not? I mean, we can do whatever we want. So I also think, let's see. So we've got our horizon here. I think we want to have some little clouds that kind of start. And when I'm first starting with this, I'm really thinking, not thinking about anything in terms of detail. I'm thinking about big shapes, I'm thinking about contrast, I'm thinking about light, I'm thinking about dark, I'm thinking about where I'm gonna place things. Um, I think it'll be kind of cool if we kind of have like maybe a big, kind of heavy clouds. Now clouds are something that's kind of a little bit hard to figure out sometimes because we think of clouds and we think of these nice big puffy puff balls that we see in the sky. And you know, if we're looking laying on the ground and we're looking straight up and we're daydreaming, yeah, we kind of see puff balls, but that's because we're looking straight up. We're seeing kind of the perimeter of them rather than the actual height of them. And um, so we kind of tend to think of them as being cotton balls. I'm sure sometimes we see them that way, but there are types, and one of these days I'm gonna figure out all the names of all the different kinds of clouds, but right now, I'm gonna stick with what I'm used to. What I'm used to is when we look out across the ocean, we see the bottoms of clouds, which are fairly flat, and then they puff up from there, and then the more we look towards ourselves, or look up from where we're standing, the more we're gonna see the profile of the 
perimeter of those clouds and see more of that roundish puffy shape. Um, the other thing I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna start adding some white in here too. This is definitely not what we're gonna end up with. We're gonna keep working on this stuff and we're just gonna develop it, we're gonna build it. I may have to cheat a little bit here and there and look at some reference pictures, which, you know, it's a great idea. A lot of times people are afraid of using reference pictures. They've seen Bob Ross paint and they know, hey, Bob Ross, he, he just gets on there and, and just paints from his head. Well, guess what? He did not. I mean, he did a bit, but he would practice every painting first, painted a second time live, and then painted a third time to fix anything he didn't like, and then that would actually be the photograph, uh, or for the books, when he did the books, those would actually be the step-by-step -step for the books. So, there was planning. He was probably using reference photos and things like that when he designed the paintings. Um, so there's just a little, little cheat about old Bob that a lot of people didn't know. So one of the things that I'm gonna be a little bit careful of is, as I'm starting to build this up, I'm starting to develop this. I, I know maybe some of you are looking at this and going, oh, that just looks like slop. Um, and right now it does. But one of the things I have to remember is when I'm down close to the horizon, when I put these clouds in, the next set of clouds is gonna lay over the top visibly. And then as I keep working through. So I'm kind of, in a way, just kind of cheating right now and just it's what it's nice about doing this kind of monochromatic layout is we can make adjustments really easy. Um, we can I'm gonna start brushing in a little bit. I kind of almost want this to feel like it just disappears, like the sky and the water just come together and disappear. I hear our dogs are going crazy. Our dogs like to. I don't know if you guys can hear them, but they like to pretend they're fighting all the time. So you can start to see, I can kind of point out to you what's starting to go on here is I am starting to build up clouds up here, a little another little cloud bank over here. I'm gonna leave this kind of open through here. One of the things that I find, um, and this is just me, you know, everybody's gonna have their own opinion on stuff like this. Art is completely subjective. But one of the things I find to be <clears throat> really uninteresting in paintings in general is blue skies. Um, I mean, a little bit of blue is fine, but a lot of times we see, um, oh, let's just paint the whole sky blue, and you know that's that's you know it's that way sometimes. But it's it's far less interesting than if we can add other elements. Oh man, Matt's working. Uh, I kind of understand. Hey, what's up, Nicole? I understand. Marissa, I'm sure Matt's probably pretty busy do, doing his career right now, but I'm glad you could join us. Nicole, I'm glad you're here. You asked a question about the koi painting earlier. I think you could do it. That one comes with a template. So I'm looking down at the computer screen. It comes with a template to get the shape, and then it's just a matter of filling in the colors. So I don't think you should be uh, frightened of trying that one. It's on the birch board, actually. I don't know where I put it. Oh, it's right behind me. Maybe I'll show off how those turned out last night. So, <clears throat> I'm really, you can tell, I'm really focusing on my background right now. And what I like to do when I'm building the background is I like to add uh, some, some interest. Again, like I said, uh, just a plain blue sky is just, just doesn't do, do it for me. Not too much. And you can see I'm adding a little bit more puffiness as I get a little closer. And this is looking pretty good. Now, water, water's a challenge. Um, it's kind of one of those things is, I'm just gonna kind of soften that up. It's one of those things that as an artist, I've been painting for a long time, um, and it's one of those things I feel like we're constantly learning. And um, I noticed we went to the coast recently, went down to Yahats, and, and I, I really spent some time really looking at the waves. And, and I think that's the thing that really is something that we all have to get used to when we're learning how to paint or do any kind of art, 
is remembering to really spend your time looking like looking at what things look at like looking at what the colors look like stop looking at what we kind of have a lot of times we have these preconceived ideas of what things look like um and that's not always the case i mean uh, i see it all the time in uh, the painting classes. It's like if I turn people loose to paint a tree on their own, it's kind of like, it's kind of a, it's a little bit of an adventure. You know, I see a lot of trees that I've never seen before and I get it. It's okay. You haven't learned how to paint trees yet. And we typically, when we, um, as adults, we start painting or drawing and we kind of default to the last time we did art. And a lot of times the last time we did art was when we were in grade school, most of us. And because, uh, you know, from the time you go on from grade school to middle school, that's when we start to kind of focus more on our specific interests. And a lot of a lot of people just aren't as interested in art when they're younger. And so we kind of just, like I said, we default back to um, what we learned in grade school. And a lot of what we learned in grade school was, you know, making mom and dad a, you know, happy Father's Day card and you know, watercolor paints and cheap tempera paints from the schools and stuff. And we don't, we kind of stop thinking about what things look like. And when we stop thinking about what things look like, we also kind of stop thinking about how might I create this. Um, <clears throat> so I encourage you, if you're really interested in art, and especially in landscape painting, um, you know, sp spend some time. I know it's, it's easy for when you're driving to get distracted by clouds and things like that, but don't do that while you're driving. <laughs> There's, again... Don't drink and drive, don't daydream and drive, don't analyze the shape of clouds and trees while you're driving. Pull over, stop, um, spend some time outside, you know, go for walks, take time that way to learn what trees look like. And what I would encourage you to look for first, and I think this is kind of a block for people, let me keep painting a little bit more here, is people have a tendency of seeing the details first and the structure second so when we see like a tree for example we the first thing we think of is branches right and so what we get focused in on painting the branches first and really what we need to focus in on is painting the overall structure and like you kind of think about like start with the big parts and work your way bigger and things like that. So I'm just kind of adding texture right now. I'm not really adding detail. Oh, you can kind of, maybe I'll add some wispiness there. Um, let's see, let's do, I think I want to do our castle like right over here. Because I think what I want to do is kind of put a nice light source right here. So I'm just going to kind of fuzz this out real quick. And I'm just adding a little bit of white. I'm just reminding myself, hey, this is where our, our light source is gonna be. And this is gonna affect everything. So this is the one thing that we can never ever paint exactly accurate. We can never paint light perfectly. Um, it, it just doesn't exa it happen because we can't put anything on the canvas that actually radiates um, anything out from it. We can make suggestions and you know hints that there's light coming from it and the way we do that is with highlights and really if you really want to capture the idea of a light source you almost have to do it just pure white uh, okay here comes the dog she has a tendency of knocking tripods over you stay over there sue all right she's panting breathing heavy all right so um i'm gonna th i think what i want to do one of the tricks that's really difficult on a canvas of this size is maintaining the idea that everything um, is the right size. So in order for this landscape to seem much larger, what we need to do is make sure that the elements that we can identify uh, with scale, being buildings, trees, things like that, um, are something that if we make them smaller, it'll make the whole painting as a whole feel larger. So I'm gonna start out I'm just gonna start right here. It's gonna be kind of a, almost like a fantasy-like castle, I think. So here's our little mound. 
Here's our little mound, and you can see I'm still using the big brush. I like to use the big brush. Here's our... Oh, that can kind of turn into part of the castle. I think this is going to be an old ruins. You can kind of see that, how that's going to develop. And again, I'm just laying this out. I don't want to get... I don't want to get too crazy with this um, yet. We'll get there. Hmm. I think I'm going to do a cliff over here. This is going to be kind of a foreground cliff. Well, let's let's actually think of it like like an Irish kind of cliff where it comes down. Yeah, I think that'll work. The water's gonna kinda come in through here, but it's kinda like a little protected cove or something like that. Alright. See this kind of being kind of a rocky coast as it kinda comes into the shallows and you know, obviously a castle out in the ocean is I'm sure there are them. <laughs> there are them. That's great. That's a great thing to say right there, Paul. There are them. Um, I'm just going to paint this like this. Yeah. This is working out. Okay. So... Now, again, I, I kind of like how this is laying out. This is all just guidelines at this point. Everything's going to change from here. Um, I do want to put some blue in the sky. And that's all pretty dry. I'm going to use a smaller brush um, for this. And this is where a lot of times it's easy for us to kind of cheat and just go for um, a big brush and just kind of glaze coat it. But I want the brush work to show up in this painting. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of what we call Bahama Blue, but it's too, um, too vibrant for me. So I toned it down a bit um, using a little tiny bit of our raw sienna, a little bit of white. And I'm pretty sloppy as I do this. One of the things you might notice is um, I'm really working to make sure that I'm not um, naturally as a right-handed painter. My hand wants to go like this when I'm up here all over. It wants to just kind of go at a 45 degree angle and I want to make sure that we avoid that. So I'm going to Just kind of mix some of these colors in here. I'm really making sure that my brush moves in different directions. And this might take forever like this, but I'll try to do it quicker. <laughs> yes, Miss Hess would be proud of the grammar. <laughs> Nicole, who's posting on here, uh, she and I were in an English class in seventh grade together. And a group of us have maintained our friendship over the lunacy of what that class was going on in there. People wonder why I like to have debates with people all the time. It's because of that stupid class. All right, so I'm wanting to get this color in here. And I'm really trying to, at this point, I, I know it doesn't look like there's a lot of color going on. I'm being sloppy. Again, I'm, my light source is up in here, so I'm going to kind of skirt around that for now. 
but I'm being a little bit um, sloppy in how I'm doing this. I don't want to be very clean and precise, and that's me. You know, that's just the way I paint, and if you paint different, that's fine. There's there's no right or I mean, there can be right and wrong. I I love to I love the idea, the notion that there's no right and wrong, and and in some ways there isn't, but in some ways there is, and. It's just kind of like you got to figure out where the where the right is and where the wrong is, and and what I mean by that is there's right ways to accomplish certain effects, and it's something that's just you have to practice and figure out on your own. Um, and there are some things that just don't always work. And and actually, what a better way of saying that is, if you're trying to do a traditional landscape, for example. It's not real um, appropriate, for example, for lack of a better term, to really hard outline a shape and then fill it in. It just, it doesn't really feel very organic that way. So now there are people who do landscapes that way and, and they have their own unique styles. I, I know, um, there's an artist Jenny really likes. I can't remember his name. Um, but he paints in all the foreground elements and then goes back and paints in the, the sky or the background afterwards. And to me, that's always kind of like for the way I paint, it, it, it seems a little backwards to me because then you can tell that that's what the brushwork did. And well, that's fine. I mean, if that's what you're trying, if that's the, the vibe you want, then by all means, do it. Um, but if you're trying to paint a, a more traditional landscape or impressionist painting or something like that, it, you, not very likely are you gonna ever paint like that. So I'm just really sloppily putting in, hello Jenny. Hello. She's wandering in. Everybody can hear you, I'm sure. Are you closing the door? I'm closing the door, it'll mess up my You will, it'll mess up my lighting. <laughs> Be gone with you. <laughs> All right. So the other thing I like to do is I'm actually just going to take a little bit of this color and water it way down so it's really thin, almost like milk. And actually I'm going to go ahead and use the biggest brush for this now. Because um, I want to kind of really quick like kind of dance some of this color in here. What's everybody doing tonight outside? Of, I mean, obviously, that's kind of a dumb question because if you're here and you're hearing me ask that question, then clearly you're hanging out with Shuli. So that's kind of a silly thing. So I just want to tell people too, um, we worked today, we met with one of our employees and we are going to start offering takeout boxes at the studio. And I gotta come back and get my light source back in here. So when I do the light source, I need to kind of fluff out. I don't want it to be like a spherical. I don't want it to be a, this a hard circle in the sky. Um, but we talked, uh, talked to one of our employees and we're working with her. We're gonna start doing some takeout boxes. So you'll be able to order them online and pick them up at the studio or we can ship them to you, whichever works better for you. Um, there is a, a, a shipping charge involved. Um, but where you can actually just, uh, like right now we our studio shut down so we can't actually go in and, and teach our classes, um, which means it's no money coming in that way. So it's kind of hard to pay rent and stuff. So, and, and the other thing is I think right now is, as I pointed out earlier with all the stress of everything that's going on with the virus, it's. We need something to distract ourselves from it. And, and uh, so I'm not gonna talk about it too much because this is my distraction. This is hopefully your distraction as well. Um, just gonna kinda keep softening this up. Um, but that way you can, you can still pick stuff up. You know, we can still do takeout orders. So that's it. You can pick it up and we'll have videos online shortly and 
you can paint at home. You know, get get kits for the family. Oh, Nicole, excellent. Wh drinking whiskey would be awesome. Huh. What do you do wrong with painting? Okay, that's a good question, and I can tell you, I know I've I've painted with you one time, um, and I don't didn't really. I don't recall exactly what your issues may have been, but I can tell you as a whole, with a lot of experience of teaching people, what I'm doing right now real quick is I'm just leaving the texture of what I did before and softening it up with a little bit of white, just kind of smushed over it. Um, I think we try to control it too much we try to focus too much on the details instead of just letting the whole thing kind of develop. So we have a tendency of holding the brush really far down like this and drawing rather than actually painting. Um, and, and there's a time and place. There's, there's nothing, like I said, there's, is there right and wrong? Nah, kind of, kind of, kind of not. doesn't really matter. It's whatever makes you happy. So I'm bringing some of this white back in here. I don't want this to get too yellow. We're gonna lose this golden tone as we keep building. Uh, how far in? We're only half hour in, so. Bob Ross would be done by now, I know, I get it. He, he used his own technique that was a little different. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry a bit. I'm gonna start building some, um, let's start building some shadows. So our light source is here. It's going to kind of catch the top edges of these clouds back here. So the underside is going to have some shadows. So I think what I want to do is I'm going to mix together. Yeah, I'm going to mix together a little bit of this raw sienna and we've got a kind of a turquoise color here. I'm going to add a little tiny bit of, there we go. Little tiny bit of some phthalo red, which is kind of a pinkish tone. Um, and what I'm trying to do is kind of, that's too big of a brush, let's not use that. Um, so anyway, Nicole, to get back to your question while I'm doing this, I'm just use, adding some dark kind of cloudy colors. One of the things we try to do too much when we're painting is we try to think about every little brush stroke um, as being a detailed thing that we're doing. So rather than just kind of thinking it of everything kind of building up together and creating a finished painting, we, we kind of think we revert back to the idea of what we did when we used to draw, and that is to, you know, draw real precise little things. Um, you know, instead of, like I said, we're, we hold the brush like this, and we're doing little tiny brush strokes, and we're trying to make the shape of the cloud, you know, a little drip of water there, make the shape of the cloud by drawing it rather than letting the shape, the colors and tones and values kind of build each other up. And you can see when I'm painting, you, you can see how far back I'm holding this brush. And I'm just, I'm probably the best example, well, I don't want to be that cocky. I'm a really good example of somebody who um, is patient with the process and doesn't try too hard to control it from the start. So when I start getting into this area, it's gonna be interesting because our light source is kind of coming through here, which means this area right through here is gonna be more highlighted. We're gonna get some shadows on the back side of this cloud and just kind of create some texture. Yeah, we'll see where this goes. Alright, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna use my bigger brush now. I wanna kinda of get some darker up in the corners. I like to get dark colors in the corners. Um, but I don't like to get too dark. I, I'm not a big fan of using black. I know a lot of people like to use black. Um, I kinda of think in a way it's a bit of a, sh I don't wanna call it a cheat, but it's kind of a shortcut. Alright, that's a, little, a lot of color, so I'm gonna. I'm using the paint fairly wet tonight, so it's kind of not really 
laying on top as much as it's building layers. There we go. That's what I wanted. So yeah, we we get away from the idea of creating a shape and filling it in and, and start um, stop thinking about the specific shapes. You know, I, I said earlier when we were talking about trees and stuff, and we think about painting the branches first and and because we're thinking about the details and I said we got to think about the shape and the, yeah that's true but we got to think about how do we create the shape and creating the shape there's two different ways to create shapes in fact I'm gonna move my canvas real quick and, and show you I've got paper right under here I'm just gonna put this right here if I were gonna paint a circle for example um, I'll just use my use my blue here you know, if we were to paint a circle that we were going to use for our sun, for example, you know, a lot of times we want to just go like this and then fill it in. Paint a circle. Well, yeah, that's what makes sense. Um, but then what happens is we tend to, all of our brushwork tends to go around in circles around that. The way I like to paint a circle is, let's do it right over here. Just kind of go around. Now, if we're painting the sun, this works really good because we still have a circular shape, but we don't have that precise um, feeling of it being something that was drawn and then filled in. We get rid of edges, and something that's something we think about. Like when we when we're doing painting and we're doing drawing, we're working in two dimensions, and two dimensionally, when we draw something we're gonna draw lines to create that shape. For example, if I were to take a piece of paper and cut out a shape, um, a silhouette, that's a two-dimensional thing. It's got hard lines and edges, but when you look at things in nature, they don't have hard lines and edges. What they have is they have edges that curve away so you can't see them anymore. So like when you look at, like, let me get this back in here. You look at like my finger here. Yes, it creates the illusion of a hard edge here, but it's not, a hard edge pencil line, it's highlights that fade out and kind of stop uh, in shadows over here. And one of the places you really see it with people who are learning how to do art is when you when they're drawing faces and portraits and you see these just almost look like wax lips drawn on people's faces. Well, that's from this idea that it has to be outlined. And so what we have to think about is, okay, how am I going to create this shape with a general um, motion and so like I'll show you this in the with the clouds in just a moment um, if you think about um, you know using the brush to blot paint on a way in a way to create the illusion of what you're trying to paint rather than relying on too heavily on it being real precise and drawn and you know that's fine I mean you can do it the other way too but I think that learning to loosen up you can learn to loosen up and bring it back really easy um, I think a lot of times like people think because of the way they see me paint when I paint like this they think that everything I do is kind of I'm accused of painting sloppy um, and it is sloppy it's a sloppy technique but then we'll do paintings like for the go box or something like that and I, I rein that back in and I work a little bit more precisely and and I can do it. I mean, I, I've done tattoo-like drawings and stuff like that, and it, it really is a lot of fun. So I'm gonna keep using this color combination. I'm liking this. We lost somebody. Where'd you go? Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Cotton Eye Joe. All right, so I'm gonna add some of this. I kind of mixed up a little bit of a darker version of that color that we just did, and I'm just gonna kind of add this to our cliffs here. This is gonna Again, our, our light source is here. It's coming back this way. It's just going to kind of cast this darker shadow here. And the nice thing about when we're painting something like this, this type of a seascape, I can dot in all these little bits of land here. I really like to do this. I gotta, I'm going to bring this cliff over a little bit sharper. And if I get too carried away with this, I can always come back. 
I'm going to bring the water right down through here. It's almost like it's an inlet into a, a river. But I can always come back. Use a little bit smaller brush for this part right here. I can always bring it back um, and bring the water in. I always like to think of painting everything that the water is interacting with. And then bringing the water back. I hope this makes sense. I hope you guys don't mind. I'm just rambling. It's been a busy couple days for the studio. It's really good. This is going to look like, I think this is going to end up looking kind of uh, very like Lord of the Rings fantasy type of setup. And I, I think that's okay. I'm not I'm just painting for fun tonight, so. You can see this starting to develop. You know, it's gonna keep developing. It's gonna keep developing. It's gonna keep developing. I just gotta tell myself it. Just, just keep painting. Just keep painting. Um, and. It does totally have a high desert kind of vibe to it right now, but when we get the water in there, it's gonna to be totally different. So, I'm gonna add some. It totally does feel like desert. Good call on that, Marissa. Good call. My beer's warming up and Chuck Pilsner when it warms up. Woo! You get some funk to it. All right, so I'm gonna start um, getting our color into the ocean. Now I want to, when I'm gonna do this ocean, one of the things I think, and, and I, I make this mistake a lot too, is we tend to try to get too much detail too far away. And what that does is all of a sudden we see detail at something that's supposed to be very far away. And all of a sudden we, our brain gets confused and we're like, oh, okay, so are we looking at a fishbowl then? Or what are we actually looking at here? So I'm going to start off, I kind of want the horizon. So it's going to be a little darker, but I'm going to avoid using our darker colors. I mean, um, adding color set gray it down. Ew, I do want to, I need to gray it down. I do need to do it. There we go. Again, I'm just, again, I'm still just kind of roughing everything in. So if I, lose some things here and there, I can rebuild them. Got some really cool little techniques I use sometimes. I gotta make sure this comes across so we don't have like a Mona Lisa situation. You guys don't know what I mean. There's this whole thing about the horizon behind the Mona Lisa being uneven. So I like to, this color, this painting is going to get much more vibrant, trust me. I like to start with, well actually as a whole I like to paint fairly neutral colors, but because I think a lot of times we rely too heavily on using vibrant colors to get the effects we want. I've done it. I've done paintings that are primary colors in black and it's very satisfying. I'm not gonna lie. There we go. Yeah. Throw a little bit of this color up here. I don't know if you guys can hear my music. We will see. Who knows, YouTube might hear my music and 
be like, you have to pay the artists for the music. I can't control it. Alright. I feel like I need a different brush. Let's see if we've got one. We do. Okay, hold on. I forgot. I'm not painting for you guys to follow. I'm painting for me. So this is something that I like to tell people. It's kind of funny. Um, I love crappy brushes. I love crappy brushes. I'm gonna show you my crappy brush. This is a really cheap Artist Loft brush, which is Michael's house brand. This was probably a 75 cent brush but it's this natural kind of, uh, there's stuff flicking off of it. Look at that, you can see how cheap it is. But it's a natural bristle brush and I really like using a natural bristle, natural bristle brush for uh, painting clouds. And I'm gonna show you why. Um, painting clouds is something that's really tricky. Uh, I'm gonna mix up a bit of kind of a gray tone and to do a gray tone, it's really, a lot of times people instinctively want to just use uh, black and white. And that's, it's, I'm okay with using black when you're making a gray tone. What I don't, I'm not a fan of is using just black and white. Um, it's just completely lifeless in my opinion. And it's really easy to use another tone. Um, if you're going for a kind of cloudy kind of color um, gray and a light blue. I mean, you can use white in there, but you can add some some blue to it to tint it. Uh, is good. I'm kind of going for a kind of a toned down purplish kind of tone here um, with the white, and I'm just gonna start building this up. And what's gonna be? I'm gonna go ahead and get this going on here more. You can see it's very purple, and that's good, but. What I like about this other type of brush is I can kind of start with my purple and I can kind of come back. With white and I kind of have to work in little patches, but I can this brush works really well to kind of push the paint around and I think this gives it more of that kind of more what people are familiar with when they see like a, an oil painting. Um, it's this letting these colors kind of mix together and create some new little colors. And it gets a little bit out of control, a little too purple and white. You can always warm it up a bit, cool it down a bit. Cool it, cloud. So as we get across the light area, it's gonna be fairly dark. But if you really watch the technique I'm using, it's not brush strokes, it's not dabbing, it's just kind of smubbling. Yes, I just created that word just now. Book it, smubble. I need to drink my beer faster. But now I'm starting to add the paint on thicker. So this is where we start to get it looking more like a painting and less like a, a rough sketch. I did use a little tiny bit of black in this. Um, black goes a long ways when you're mixing colors. So just be aware of that. I really like these other colors continuing to just kind of hang out and be there. And I'm picking up little bits of these turquoise colors that I put in here, picking up little bits of the pink, phthalo red. Just let these colors get together. 
but it's really getting the clouds right. Clouds are one of those things we really don't teach in the studios. Um, we do some, we do some kind of wispy, fairly simple clouds, and that's good. Uh, but getting, getting these more textured, detail looking clouds is a little bit harder to teach if you haven't practiced and you haven't painted very much. Because what I can do is I can start adding this texture and we'll kind of come back and add some highlights in here a little bit more. But every time I'm going in here, I'm not just doing pure white. And if I do, I mean, I do it some. But what I'm doing is I'm allowing the white to pick up some of this kind of other color that we're using here. I don't know if the chat feature is working. It looks like it's shut down. That's a little bit too blue. And if you ever like are working, no, yeah, see there. Okay, so there, that's good. If you're ever working on something like this and you feel like, wow, I did too much, too much color here. It's all right, just wait for it to dry a little bit, paint over it. I probably am going to end up using a little bit smaller of a brush down further in our distance. Further away, I'm going to add a little bit more of the gold to it. Definitely some kind of a storm moving in here, but hey, if it's Ireland or the Pacific Northwest, I mean, it happens. That's what we, that's what, what, it just really, it just happens. reason I like these kind of rougher brushes is they tend to splay out and they do a lot of the work for me. They um, add the texture without me having to do a lot of extra work. I like to let the colors have a lot of natural variation to them. It helps um, make it more interesting so I don't over mix when I'm mixing on my palette. Chat says says that there's my chat's not working, so let me look and see if it's working on my phone. Let me pop on here real quick. That's not what I wanted to do. Let's go back here. All right, looks like no, nobody else is chatting anyway. So anyway, I'm just gonna keep working on these clouds a bit. We'll work into the foreground. I don't know how long I'm gonna paint tonight. I'll probably paint until Jenny comes and peers in the door and says, come on, finish it up. They're having some good family time. I think uh, the kids just found out that school in Oregon's closed through April 28th now. And uh, I think that kind of hit home a little bit more than it has in the past. 
uh, I mean, than things have in the last week. I think it was a lot of fun. Oh, sweet, we're getting another week off of school. And now it's like, oh, wow, we're getting six weeks off from school. And I think that's um, made our, our daughter will be 14 next month. And I think that really was a wake up call to her that this is a big deal. Not that she didn't think it was before, but I think it maybe kind of scared her for the first time a little bit. I could be wrong, but we're doing our part to try to keep everybody happy. I'm not too worried. She's not worried for herself, but she's worried for others. All right, I'm liking how this is gonna be a bold sky. I'm liking that. throw some little hint of that in there maybe a little hint of some clouds over here so it's not too lonely on the left hand side lonely on the left all right let's see else see else again there I go with the proper English It's really easy to want to do too much with this, and uh, I don't want to do too much. We'll kind of come back and maybe address some of these shadows and stuff. It's looking a little sloppy over here, but that's okay. So by doing that monochrome with the golden color earlier, um, what we end up with, the other thing is I've got this little cloud right here that's kind of in the middle ground, and it looks like it's laying over the top of this. Well, it could be. This could be a higher cloud. Um, but it's really easy to try to do too much with it at this point. That's kind of a little oops, but that's okay. Um, but you can see in some spots, I don't know how well you can see it, but we've, I've left, I haven't put the paint on so thick that I lost, that I've lost my, some of my gold showing through in spots. And that just kind of helps keep it from being too cool and um, like lifeless. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's good. Okay. So again, I, I kind of feel like this cloud feels like it's cutting over a little unnaturally. So let's do this. Let's fix that real quick. I'm just going to take some of this color. Touch more black to that. What's up, everybody? I don't know what's going on with the chat. It looks like it's not working for some reason. It was working earlier. There, that's better. I'm just gonna kind of come through here real quick and add some white highlights. We'll get that more definitely lately, but we don't want to get too much definition going on in the back, in the far background, because that's it. Kind of messes with our eye when we do that. We try to figure out why. How come I'm seeing so much detail back there? Um, so let's see. Let's go ahead and. Continue to add some darkness to this hill here, this cliff. So whenever I'm painting cliffs, I always try to think of like, what direction does the cliff flow?
and then I, I do my brushwork in that direction because that makes it make more sense. It's like, okay, why are the brush strokes going to side to side if this is a vertical surface? And yeah, I mean, you could, you can sometimes. There's time and place for it. I'll just kind of do a little bit of just pure black right here. Let's build this up. I'm gonna go ahead and paint this whole little bit right here black. And there's a reason for that. I'm going to really bring the gold, bring the green out. There we go, that's what that needed. Just gonna really bring this black in and let it be the foundation for our green when we do the green. Let's do this here. Boom. All right, cool. Cool, cool beans. Cool pot of gold. All right, so let's get to work on our water a little bit more. And I'm going to, right now the water seems very thin and washed out. I want to add some more color to it. I'm going to start with some white. We're going to have some white highlights that kind of come down through here. Again, I'm going back to my cheap old 75 cent brush from Michaels. I don't know why we have this one. Probably bought it to see. I, I, I have a tendency of buying these little brushes like this sometimes just to see, oh, will this get this particular effect at the studio? And, Sometimes it would, and we had an old uh, shop manager who just did not like me adding stuff to the list. All right, so I want to make sure that we start getting some some heavier paint in the water. You know, and actually I need to in the sky a little bit here too, so let me do that real quick. I don't want to get too far too far gone. be bold. Let's paint that blue. Let's paint this blue. What? Why blue? Okay, so blue I like to use um, when I'm going to be doing a green. sweet Caroline coming from the other room. All right, so I like to use this kind of blue, and it's like, oh, sorry, I kicked the camera again. Uh, I like to use this blue to, to, it's kind of a weird deal, but it really helps, I think, to establish a, a foundation for green. Um, it actually makes sense when we start getting into it. I'm gonna add just a little bit more light color to our horizon. Doing a little bit of white around here. I'm gonna create some contrast between our cliff and our island here. A little over an hour into this, we're doing pretty good. I don't know, maybe I'll do a little ruin on this hillside here too. I've not been to Ireland, so I don't know if they're everywhere or not. Okay, that's looking better. So now, I 
don't want to use that crappy brush for this next part. I'm just going to use the brush, this brush. So what I want to do is, is as I'm adding these colors in here, I want to think about the colors that are up, up, up in here um, and kind of, I don't want to exactly mirror them down into here, but they are going to tint what's down here. And I think this is one of, again, we have a tendency of wanting to paint the water blue too much. It's just a natural instinct, I get it. But it's just not what we typically see. We're typically gonna see more gray tones when we've got a cloud. And then also the ocean especially areas where there's lots of seaweed and such. Don't worry, we're going to get some reflection. But um, Anyway, the, the ocean tends to have a little bit more of a greenish grayish cast, greenish grayish cast to it. So again, a lot of times when we start painting uh, like this type of a ocean where we want it to look like it really hits the horizon line, we have a tendency of doing too much detail too far out. You might see the occasional little variation in color, um, but it's really not until you kind of get more into the foreground that you'll actually start to see waves and things like that. And that's, that's actually going to be really kind of tricky in this painting is building the waves in a way that feels natural. They kind of are going to want to come in. Maybe it's not even a, maybe it's not waves. Maybe we don't do waves out around the ocean, out around over here. Cause obviously I, I, I think typically when there's a lot of cliffs um, and jagged elements like this, you don't necessarily have waves in around them. You have them in close to the shore, but not necessarily further out. So maybe we'll just kind of play with that. Maybe this is a lake, I don't know. Or a lock, I guess we'd call it a lock if it was in Ireland. So what color is the water? Let's talk about that for a second. I wish the chat was working. Let me look on my phone. Well, it looks like it's working. Jenny's chatting. Hey, Jenny. Um, what color is what color is the ocean? What color is water? Well, I mean, again, water tends to have a little tint to it. That tint is affected by mineral deposits and and algae and things like that. But typically the colors that we see are the ambient reflection of all the other colors that are out there. So why do we see blue water? Well, the sky tends to be blue unless it's cloudy. And so rather than always seeing blue sky, you know, we're going to see, I mean, blue water, we're going to see colors in the water that mimic what's up in the sky, what's going to round. Underneath this, you know, obviously we've got a lot of purple going down heavy here. We're going to come in and do that. Probably get some rough water kind of going in down in here. All right, I'm gonna kind of just 
start to suggest. So this is kind of a tricky thing right here because we've got two things that are gonna happen with this island out here. Number one, we're gonna get reflection that comes towards our eye. And number two, we're gonna have shadow that casts towards the right. So this is something we never get into in the studios just because it's a really, I wouldn't say it's a complex notion, but it's a complex notion to explain in the time frame that we have to explain such things. So this is a good foundation color for the water. And now I can kind of start coming in with more accurate, accurate tones to what are in the sky. I'm gonna not worry about painting over my little cliffs and stuff. And as I work through this area, I can see my sky, and or this needs to be a little lighter because my sky is a little lighter right through here. Just gonna keep it rocking. There we go, a little lighter. I don't want to get too light though, because I don't want it to look like it's the big light area. Our big light area is gonna be right around in here. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of start to smudge that in. So that's our light area. So that's the light area from a bit in the sky. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna go ahead and just start adding some of this going on reflection shadows. I know, I know, Scottish locks. What can I say? I'm Scotch Irish. With a German name. <laughs> All right. So again, I'm creating our shadows, our reflections. It's messy. Everything should be messy at this point. It's starting to develop though, I can see it, I can see it. Hopefully you guys can see it starting to take shape. I got some regular add in some kind of greenish tone that's a little little acidic looking to me but we'll tone it down again we'll do the same thing down here 
Do, do. This is where the cheap brushes don't work good. Cheap brushes just, uh, they're good for being messy, but they're not great for laying color on. I mean, they're good for like laying color on thick and heavy, but not moving color around because that kind of tends to just lift and push and all kinds of things. Nicole mentioned uh, locks being Scottish, and I always think it's interesting because I, I do have um, Scottish background, but our Scottish family came through Ireland, and uh, not that I know much about any of that, but um, I always think it's interesting on St. Patrick's Day how everybody shows up with kilts and bagpipes, and it's like, hey, okay, I guess talk to Irish people about how they feel about that, and I don't think they'd be quite so thrilled. All right, so let's start to build our castle out here. And I don't know, maybe it's just a lookout. I don't know what it is, who knows? Let's do it. I'm just gonna take some dark color here. I don't wanna use black. I'll probably use a little touch of black just to richen it up, there we go. And I think what I wanna do is, maybe, I'll, maybe this is a good time for me to actually reference a photo or something, let's do that. Let's see. Let's look at the Irish castle. Oh, let's look for Irish castle ruins. That would be even better. Oh, there's some for sale. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm going in the right direction. So let's kind of... Let's kind of make it a little bit straighter up and down. It's ruined, so... There's all kinds of stuff going on there. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and just add this darker color. This blue is just too obnoxious at this point. So this little spot right here is a little bit problematic for me because it doesn't have the vibe I want it to have um, interactions with water are always horizontal so I need to kind of give the impression of this being horizontal. Oops. Oh, look, I look, added a little rock out there. Okay, cool. Just going to leave it there. Alright, so I also want to kind of take some of this tone color value, whatever you want to call it. Add a little bit of this into our water.
Bum, 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 bum. I don't know if you guys can hear the song, but it almost makes me want to sing Cotton Eye Joe. Let's see. It does kind of have a little. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. I almost feel like this is where. It almost feels like more like. Uh, like where they would have sent somebody to be punished. <laughs> send them out to this little isolated island out there and be like, you gotta hang out there for 30 days with no toilet paper. Yeah, that sounds about right. All right, let's add, let's get some more of this purple over here. So I always, when I'm painting water like this, I always try to keep the brushwork going side to side because the reality is water is always, for the most part, except for when it's in motion, it's a horizontal plane. So when we're looking out across the ocean, what we're seeing is horizontal planes. Um, I don't know what's going on with paint there. It's too wet. Do I sound like I'm mumbling? So this is leaving little streaks and there we go. Yeah. We'll pop up some of this light and stuff in this as we go. I'm cheating. I'm looking at computer monitors to see what it looks like from a distance. It's getting there. It's getting there. Once again, if you're, um, don't know what, who I am and what I do. My name is Paul. I go by the nickname Shilly. It's been around for a long time. And I am, uh, along with my wife, I'm own Van Gogh Artist Farm Studio. And um, we also have a The Go Box, which is the channel you're looking at, watching right now where we do online tutorials. Tonight I'm just chilling out, drinking some beer, doing a painting, chatting, hopefully helping everybody relax when everything else is kind of not easy to relax with everything that's going on right now. Um, but again, I don't want to get too focused on that. I want to focus in on enjoying the evening and and uh, unwinding, chatting, finding out what people are interested in painting. Hopefully people see what we're doing. All right, Marissa, have a great evening. It's what, 11 o'clock where you live, so I get it. I get it. I don't blame you for checking out. Um, anyway, so you can go to gobox.com and buy the supplies. Uh, we have kits available that are um, for the videos that are already on our channel, we have a subscription box for all of our new releases. So in the, each month we release a couple new projects and those are available in the subscription, um, which you get them at a discounted rate through the subscription versus buying them individually. Um, we also have through our studio, we're doing takeout boxes right now or takeout bags of projects. I think we've got four or five projects available on our main vingo.com website. Um, our GoBox stuff is gobox.com, it's G-O-G-H-B-O-X. If you're liking what we're doing, I'm taking a little breather, got to plug myself here. Um, if you like what uh, you're seeing, go ahead and click the subscribe button and click the little notification bell. We're going to be trying to do quite a few videos. Some of them are going to be like this. I think we're going to do another one where Jenny just kind of does her normal evening sketching, uh, which is pretty much every night. And uh, we'll probably 
just do some chattering and I'm touching my face like crazy and it's probably driving somebody out there nuts because they're like, go touch your face, man. Um, but anyway, so we're just gonna keep building this painting up. Um, I can see I need to add a little bit more of my kind of violet color kind of up in here. I wanna tone that down a bit though. Nope, might be two, there we go, there we go. Again, we're gonna come through this area and add some water and some, uh, some textures and water and things like that, some ripples. I mean, I've been painting, what, a little over an hour and a half? This is kind of a lot of work for an hour and a half already. This is feeling um, really dark right now, but I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm going to do here as this continues to develop. Um, is As I continue rolling through on this, I'm just going to check and see if I missed any chats. Um, as I continue to roll through this painting, one of the things that happens is this foreground is very dark right now, and that's good. We want the foreground to be dark because one of the ways that we give the impression of things being further away is by letting them be a little bit lighter, less saturated, less detail, um, and the foreground being more detail, more color, uh, more saturation, um, and then obviously larger. Um, but so when we start getting into this area and over in here, and we'll do a little bit on this this island here, but this island's getting hit from the back, so it's going to be more silhouetted. Um, but when we get up into here, this light's going to be shining right over onto this flat spot, and we're going to really pop the grass um, there and uh, really kind of give some nice balance to this whole painting. Um, we will also have... A little bit of brighter green on kind of the edges of this side maybe a little hint on this side over here so let's go ahead and start doing that i think i'm going to leave the um other I, was, I thought about doing a castle on this side and okay i want to leave that off i think i'll maybe do some rocks or something maybe make it look like there was an old wall or something there let's let's do that We're just gonna kind of create. Just kind of break this up so it's not quite so tall. I mean, not quite <laughs> tall. That's not the right word. Uh, not quite so just like a straight line across the top. Let's break it up. Let's break it up and give it some height here. The brush is a little bit wet, so it's. So I'm trying to, when I do the little brushwork, I'm thinking of little tumbled stones and broken rocks. Looks good. I'm going to go ahead and Throw a little extra shadow in underneath here. Da, da, da. There, there we go. Feel a little more interesting looking. Uh, we'll, we'll get in there more. I don't know how long I'm going to paint tonight. I might paint till midnight. Who knows? YouTube would be like, you have a four hour video. Please don't do that again. I'll be like, I'll do it. I'll do what I want. Pretty sure Jenny just rolled her eyes in the other room. I'm not sure. guys I do want to add some little disturbance around this island I'll do that in a bit I'm gonna kind of save that for last right now I'm just gonna kind of keep building this up 
I'm gonna go ahead and just use pure black right here. Again, I might end up, I might be getting ahead of myself a little bit by doing this black right now, but I'm gonna do a little bit right here too. It's amazing to me um, in painting, we have a tendency, I know I've done it a lot, but of forgetting shadows um, or making shadows not make sense. And it's like, it, it's, it's not as hard as, as it seems like it should be. Um, you just kind of look at which direction the light's coming, which way it's gonna, so that, and when I'm holding my brush up here, I mean the light source is here. So this is gonna cast a shadow, the castle's gonna cast a shadow through the bristle where my brush is pointing. That rock's gonna point there. I mean, it, it's always gonna start from here and you can kind of use your brush to figure it out. And it's, it's really not hard to add shadows. I think people try too hard usually. Um, but like over here is a good example um, I'm gonna add some yellow to these to make them pop a little bit more But then what I'll kind of do is I'll come back with maybe a little bit of blue or toned uh, maybe purple and add shadows and That'll give all of this these rocks and things that I just painted in here So much more dimension not because they themselves are highlighted or shadowed, but because they're casting shadows You know, I'll probably do another one or two of these as the time comes up over the next week or so, a couple weeks, month, whatever. Um, and if, uh, if you got any ideas of something you'd like to see me paint, throw it in the, uh, throw it down in the, the message comment section and uh, I'll see what I can do. Um, it's... I've painted a lot of paintings over the years and sometimes it's kind of hard to come up with new ideas and you know everybody else has ideas but I've I don't know I've painted a couple hundred different paintings and it's you know yeah sometimes we come up with new ideas but it's nice to have fresh ideas from others too Just adding some more depth there. This painting's looking really dark, really dark. So let's do this. I'm gonna go ahead and take a little break from, actually no, let's do, I'm gonna add some grass on here. Who the heck is watching baseball? I don't know. So I'm just adding little bits of this yellow, really. And it's kind of an interesting idea. And I'm gonna green that up a bit. That was a little too yellow, but. It's amazing how much our eyes will perceive yellow as being green <laughs> when they're painted on top of black or something like that. And if I get too carried away with this, and I, I feel like I just did a little bit. It's really easy to kind of just come back and add some of the dark color back in and um, kind of bring that back. Speaking of dark color, I'm going to add some highlights to this castle out here. Um, in just a second, I want to add just a little hint of our yellow over here. Again, we can come back, it's too much. 
If it's too much yellow, you can always paint it out. So we're gonna add some dimension to this castle real quick. We're gonna add some highlight to it so it looks like it's more of a cylinder that's been broken. Um, and I'm going to mix up a little kind of warmish gray tone. Some of those little highlights on there. Just doing some real fine little highlighting right now. Somebody's hanging out. I can see how many people are looking. I always think it's funny I see these people that I follow on YouTube and they do a live stream and they've got like, oh, we got 10,000 people in right now. I've got like two. <laughs> but I'm new, I'm new. We've been only been doing this for a couple months. And with very little regularity, so let's make it more regular. Let's join each other a little bit several times a week. Oh, that's good, right there. You can add some little hints, but you have to be careful when you're bringing in this bright yellow because I, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pull a Jenny right now, and I'm gonna bring this up so you can kind of see it a little better. You can see these little bits of yellow and stuff are adding these little details. I don't want to get too detailed on it. It's too far away, but I mean, I want to have detail. I don't want it to be non-detailed. Mix up a little. darker shadow color. So I'm going to do this little shadow real quick. It's kind of coming across right here. I'm going to do a little brighter of a highlight just on a couple of these little edges. Just going to use some pure white. I hope if you guys See this, you know, anytime. That you choose to give it a chance. Now, I wasn't born painting. Uh, I remember some of my first paintings. Maybe I'll dig them out one of these days. I've got a box of them. And um, I remember some of my first paintings, and, and they're really, really <laughs> not good. But very few people are good out of the womb. Some people have a natural um, knack for some of this stuff. You know, I know Picasso, some of the stuff you see, you see pictures that he did when he was like six years old and it's pretty amazing. And the things that I see that people who are naturally predisposed to being phenomenal artists is they understand perspective uh, and contrast without having to be taught it. And those are two of the hardest things that to teach. Um, they, you can learn it. Everybody can learn it. But it's, it's something that uh, it takes some practice to understand it because it's, 
it's really taking this flat surface and it's trying to figure out, okay, how do I add dimension and how do I add these things that are supposed to be here? Well, it, there's, there's mathematics to some of it. There's formulas. Hold on. It's time for another brewski. Uh, I'm just cleaning off my Chuck pills now. All right. Oh, that was bad. Let me pour this the right way. I got beer on my canvas. <laughs> oh, well. Things happen. Uh, awesome. My... 12 ounce beer in my 80 ounce beer glass. Uh, all right, truly Irish painting now. <laughs> okay, so let's start adding some yellow up here. At first, I'm gonna start kind of smudging this color in so it tints this more of a comfortable yellow. I gotta say, this is a, a lot harder than it looks um, to sit here and talk without a co-pilot. Now I'm just talking to myself, I think. I don't think there's anybody left. We gotta finish this up though. I can tell my castle's a little crooked, but you know what? It's painting people. It's not architecture. So what I'm doing is I'm just starting to add this concept of it's brighter green. I'm gonna slide this over a little bit more here so you guys can maybe see the part I'm working on a little bit better. Green is a really hard color. It's a really difficult color to get proper in paintings. Um, they tend to feel really unnatural. I mean, I, I have a paint, I have a tube of green over here and it's, it's just, I just don't like it. <laughs> it makes it really hard to get a good feel. So I'm gonna build my green by playing with yellow and blue. And in fact, it's kind of uh, more of a turquoise. You can kind of add some of this in here. And visually what happens is our eyes pick up the two colors next to each other and identify it as being green. So it's a good way to trick ourselves into thinking there's more going on than there is. And you can leave little dollops and little tufts. Good there, I'm liking that. And I'm gonna use my biggest brush. I'm gonna go ahead and start getting some of this in here. The brush is wet. Let me 
see we're really lightening this area up. And you can see what I'm doing. Oh, I just totally skewed the camera. Sorry, hold on, let me fix that. Huh, <laughs> I'm like a bull in a china shop tonight. Um, what I'm doing is rather than brushing the paint on them, I'm just applying the paint by just touching the brush to the canvas. And it gives us these great little textures and shapes. And a lot of times we, we instinctively want to brush. And it's like, I mean, it, of course, it's called a paintbrush. Of course, we want to brush. Um, but that's not really always the best way to apply paint. It's really important to not be so heavy with it that we lose texture. And that's really yellowish, but that's all right. Can I come in? I'm really bouncing around on this tonight. So this using this kind of turquoise in darker areas is something that. Uh, Monet used to actually do a lot. If you look at a lot of his paintings, um, it's starting to get a little muddy in there, so I'm going to leave that alone. <coughs> if you look at a lot of his paintings, you'll see that he, in darker areas, shadow areas, he'll add this like bright turquoise. And in, in a weird way, it makes it feel darker without being darker. Um, it's actually really a cool technique. This area right here just got a little too muddy with that extra little bit of turquoise, but if I start working on it too soon, it'll just kind of get muddier. So I'm just going to kind of leave that alone. Let's go back to the water. The water, I like how this looks. I mean, it looks like, um, to me, it looks more like what we would see in the water. I'm not going to do much more with it. I don't think I'm going to do anything else with the clouds. I just, I'm content with the clouds. So um, I'm going to go ahead. ahead. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, add some surface interaction. With our island. You can kind of create um, <clears throat> shapes and little coves and things like that. I don't want to get too crazy going too far up with a lot of this little detailed brushwork. Um, it's just not necessary, but I can. Add some little smudgy. start to get some surface disturbance as we get a little closer to the rock so we can see what's going on a little bit more. One of the things, I'm, so, I'm sorry, excuse me, if you guys heard that, that was terrible. I, I should not burp while I'm teaching, but it's St. Patrick's Day. I mean, one thing you have to be careful of when you're doing these little surface interactions is recognizing where slopes end and start and I was able to kind of come in and create a little bit more contour there. I'm going to go ahead and I've got this one little dot out here that was a total accident. I'm going to see if I can yeah, put a little bit. So like what I'm talking about is a lot of times people will be doing their ripples coming up along this edge and then they'll start going up this edge. Well, we can't see that. You know, it's not something that we would be able to, I'd see a little bit on the back side, but you're not going to see a lot. I'm 
We're gonna do the same thing down into this area here. Just add some definition. What? Are you done? No, I'm not done. Such a long paper. It's been two hours. I told you guys she was gonna pop her head in here and start giving me grief pretty soon. We're getting close to done now. Or I'm getting close to done. I don't know why I would say we. So I'm just gonna start getting this surface interaction in here. coming in. Just little hints. blur out this back side of these waves. Leaves a nice little lip. And the leaves. Gonna kind of leave that like that. I'm gonna come back though. Mix up a little purplish kind of tone here, and eh, maybe a little bit greenish, dull. It's a little darker. And I'm just gonna kind of come in and just. A little too blue. Just add some little hint, some shadow under these waves. I picked up a little bit of yellow there on accident. Oh well. Seaweed. Throw some little ripples out here too. You can see I'm not trying real hard to be precise. It's a little bit messy, and that's okay. You get too precise, and things just don't work as well.
All right, I'm happy with that area. And we've got one more viewer just popped in. Hey, what's up? Oh boy. Then they're out. Let's see if anybody said it. So we're get, I'm just about done, really, with this painting. Um, I'm happy with everything that's going on. I feel like I need a little bit more yellow up here, so let's do that real quick. I'll add some highlights on some of these rocks. That sneeze coming on, hold on. Excuse me, wow, that sounded very, uh... <coughs> Another one, oh. I swear it's nothing, it's just allergies. I'll go ahead and do my public service announcement. People, don't go out more than you need to. Just go to the store for essentials. Let other people stock up. Don't hoard it all. Give everybody a chance, yo. Alright, so I did that. I'm going to add some little highlights on these rocks real quick. Let's mix up a nice little light color. Light gray. Purplish. Let's see, I've got a little drop of water. Gosh, I wonder if you guys can hear my family. Highlights there, maybe a little dab of white here and there. I don't know that that's going to do much good, but I am going to mix up a little darker purple. Do some quick little shadows. That looks a little wonky, but hey, it is what it is. We can fix that. Okay. Getting close to done here, y'all. Oh, yeah. We are at two hours and four minutes. Wow. Awesome. rock right here.
really feel like the sun's just gonna hit this spot right here. Pop that on really bright. Maybe that's too heavy, I don't care. I don't care. It's really easy to get too muddy in through here. Maybe give a little, little flicks. Yeah, get it. Maybe there's some grass. All right, guys. I think I'm gonna wrap it up in a couple hours. Just kind of taking a break. Oof, that's wet. I feel like I need to. I'm gonna call it good, guys. That's it. I'm not gonna do any more. I'm gonna go ahead and sign it. Always gotta sign it. So there it is. That's our finished painting for tonight. I mean, it's just a, you know, really just kind of unwinding, finding something else to do. And uh, that's what I got. If you guys have any um, suggestions, something you'd like to see us paint, let me go back to our regular screen here. Let's go. See? Hey, we're back. Anyway, so if you have any ideas of something else you would like to see us paint, either Jenny or I, Jenny's a, um, a little bit, and we've pulled got totally different styles. Mine's obviously very this kind of sloppy um, kind of impressionism and Jenny's much more of a refined more graphical type of painter and if, if you would like to try see either of us paint anything I, I know we're going to do some more live streams and some of them are going to be painting sometimes it's going to be like I said Jenny's talked about just sketching and just kind of chatting and stuff like that and I, I think we could have entertaining banter once in a while and anyway so again Happy St. Patrick's Day. I hope everything's going great in your household. Stay safe, wash your hands, keep your distance from people as much as you possibly can. Only go out and get stuff if you need it. Um, and if you do go into the store and it's fully stocked and you feel like you need to buy more than you need, please don't. Um, there's other people that need it too. And I, I know I've seen people on Facebook posting that they're down to three rolls of toilet paper because every time they go to the store, you know, there's some Yahoo who's got 20 packs in his garage and you've got other families that don't even have enough to get through three days so four days five days whatever a week um so you know try to remember there's other people in this world and we're all trying to get through this together and the only way we get through this together is if we remember that we're not the most important thing we're all part of the big picture so i'm gonna call it a night guys hey happy saint patrick's day much love from the shilly household um check us out on go box check us out on Go. love y'all peace